Well, coming from the same city as Miss Monica Liu, we have with us Miss Lata Bajoria of the Hooghly Mills Company. Coming from a conservative Marwadi household, Miss Lata Bajoria had to take over the jute business of her late husband, Arun Bajoria, in the most challenging circumstances you can think of. And in doing so, not only did she discover her true self, but also learned the art of being selfless through her philanthropic venture, Apne Aap. Born and brought up in a liberal family in Mumbai, Lata Bajoria was the typical city girl who loved her freedom. At 20, she was married into a conservative Marwari family and moved to Kolkata. Her life became all about rules and customs. Her husband Arun Bajoria was known as the Jute Baron who controlled much of India's jute production then. But Lata Bajoria had to spend the next few decades living under his shadow with no voice on anything consequential, let alone business. When her husband died in 2008, Lata finally came face to face with the huge jute empire that he had left behind. But she had absolutely no clue about anything business. She was 57 then. That was when she rediscovered herself, taking independent charge of both her business and life. Today, Lata Bajoria single-handedly manages her family's business under Hooghly Mills Company. But more importantly, she has charted her own path, immersing herself in social work with Kolkata-based NGO Apne Aap and is championing the cause of organic living. Lata Bajoria personifies the life lesson that it's never too late. My name is Lata Bajoria. I am, I was born in Bombay. I'm a Bombay girl. I am studied here. I'm an economics graduate from the Bombay University, studied in Sofia. And I had a very, very carefree life till I got married. I was, you know, driving a car. I was swimming. I was, I was also bicycling that time. And all the life, too many friends and life was really good. And I, my, my parents are quite reformist. Sudharak dim ko At the age of 18, like traditional Marwari girls, I got married to a very conservative family in Calcutta. And uh, it was a very kind of a cultural shock. Because coming from here and then, you know, staying in Parda and from that lifestyle to not to be able to do anything, but, you know, a very conservative family, the first, Day of my marriage, my mother-in-law tells me, oh, you know, go around and Surya ko namaskar karo. And go around so many times and this way and that way. And I said, my God, you know, I'm just chakkar aa How do I <laughs> deal with these things? So it, it was, it, such incidents were happening every day. No friends. Dosson ka to sawali nahi hai, bas puja paat. And rituals, rituals, there were millions of rituals which we had to follow. And I was the only daughter-in-law, to more so. So, you know, I mean, in Bombay, it was so free, but when I go there, even cross the road, I have to go in the car. The car has to go around. You could, such simple things also, you needed an escort to go everywhere. So, uh, like once I made just an innocent remark, which I learned in Bombay, that uh, the God made friends and the devil made the relatives. And, <laughs> All hell broke loose. To oh, my goodness, वहाँ friends का नाम और stable कि दोस्तों को छोटा ही नहीं चीज जो परिवार वाले हैं माने go out with your sister in law and all that तो things were so funny also now I when I look back so सारे दिन पूजा पाठ then tragically I uh, lost my first child who was a son 
तो उसके बाद तो देर वॉज यू नो काइंड ऑफ अ मॉरल प्रेशर कि भाई यू मस्ट हैव सन्स नाउ एंड फिर पूजा का सिलसिला कि ये कराने से ऐसा होगा एंड देन एज अ रिजल्ट दैट कल्मिनेटेड इन टू फोर डॉटर्स वन बाय वन विथ लॉट ऑफ सो मच ऑफ सो मच ऑफ दान धराम एंड यू नो एवरी डे इट वॉज अ डिफरेंट स्टोरी कहीं पूजा में जाओ तो यू नो आई वुड बी टेकन अ साइड टू द पंडित एंड उसको कान में कुछ कुछ बोल के ओ गिवर एप्पल क्यों ऑल द प्रसाद एंड आई डोंट नो हाउ मेनी सन सब सपोज टू गेट बाई डूइंग दैट सो दैट वॉज देयर एंड आई हैड नो क्लू अबाउट द बिजनेस दो इट वॉज सच ए ह्यूज Uh, I mean, industry. Uh, I, I never entered the office. I'd never even been to in, inside a jute mill. Though I live bang opposite, ironically. So it was a very restricted life. My husband was very proud. He would say, "Oh, you know, my wife doesn't know anything about business. She doesn't even know how many jute mills I have." So that was a kind of typical life which I led. And business-wise, let's say I was not even allowed to enter the jute mill for 40 years of a married life. so that was quite something and he was dealing he, he had so many jute mills he had financial dealings with so much properties he was a genius man he had a very high iq he was a one man show but i had i was not aware of anything i mean his business dealings he was meeting so many people what was going on as far as the business was concerned nothing just say one ritual after another and uh, no friends in a very very restricted so i i i even used to call him that you are a seventh century man that i married to that but i was only one at least there was a big house no financial problems well then my actually my story actually started when my husband died so i was 57 at that time and ironically uh, all the sense of emancipation i took and there was no time also for me to mourn because within 3 days of uh, him dying and because there was no male member so i had to take over take over means i had to face all my employees and i had to face them and tell them that uh, look as long as i'm here you don't have to worry about anything and i'll take over and i promise not to do to them i promise to myself also that uh, i am going to give my 100% whatever it is whatever i am and that is why where my actual journey started so that is not knowing the and then you know not knowing the word of f in finance people would say re finance samalo how do i do it on what basis do i decide what is to be sold what is to be looked after and what how do i do i've never even entered the office so it was then suddenly i i'm thirst upon everything i'm to i have to look after so anyway i started the first thing i did i bought a laptop and i thought that i am illiterate without my own identity and also then my first uh, email id was lata arun bajoria because i wanted to you know be, have the name also with me and that is still there and kept a proper tutor not ki kisi ne sikha diya because then it that won't matter the second thing i started i started going to the office i had to and then i started i reading the economic times which for us nothing to be ordinary paper dekh liya see the picture thing or just fashion but now i realized that i had to read it and then the sooner all the words start making sense to you all this business uh, sense so lot of things the changes that happened to me were quite unique in the sense that i started finding myself gravitating towards the men when i would go out anywhere about because i wanted to learn so much my especially if i went to a jute party then i would just automatically that was the scene like kya ho raha hai and all that and then i would suddenly i would be you know i really would find that the women are staring at me their wives because at the age of even this i, I was starting to be threatened that my goodness and then i realized that i have to have a balance तो दूर रहना ही बेटर है आई कैन आस्क क्वेश्चन डिस्क्रिप्टली और लर्न फ्रॉम द पेपर और समथिंग लाइक दैट सो दिस आर वेरी फनी फनी थिंग्स आल्सो दैट हैपन यू डोंट रियलाइज इट दैट ऑटोमेटिकली यू आर नॉट सेग्रीगेटेड एंड यू वांट टू गो टू डिफरेंट लेवल सो आई स्टार्टेड नॉट इवन रिकॉग्नाइजिंग माय ओन सेल्फ द चेंजेस हैपन सो मच एंड 
So, this is the basic story and then of course, I had to handle the day to day operations and uh, then one day I started, I thought that uh, I've never been inside the jute mill, I used to hear so much about that, my life was for 40 years I had heard of all that. Let me try and go. I asked one of my managers that can I, I would like to visit. He said, no, 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 don't even think of it, madam. I said, why? He said, if you go, the production will come down. I said, am I a menka or ambar, what? My name, meri jane se kya farak padega? Then no, 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 bas. Uh, to then I said, ki thik hai, that time I, I didn't. But then suddenly, a few days later, I said, let me go. I didn't ask anyone this time, I just went. And, and that was such a turning point in my life because 3,000 workers, and of course, when they saw, they were all shocked, including the guy who told me not to come, the manager and all, and all these people, they almost fell at my feet. Because for them, then I realized that there was respect in their eyes. And then I realized that uh, they are, you know, they, are, uh, they have a respect, and for them, I was the Malik. Because I had taken uh, the place of Mr. Bajoria. So for they only recognize me as this widow that okay, she is uh, what Arun uh, Babu was for them. And so then I decided, and they only told me one thing, that uh, please, please, please keep on coming, up aya kariye. And that gave me such a boost that even as a woman and as a widow of such a man, which I've never even met them, I've never even, they know that I'm behind and yet they are respecting me so much and they want me to come. They want to interact with me, they want to tell me their things and all. So, that was very nice and then of course I started, I started uh, consolidating because there were so many things to do, so many mills to look after and I thought that is what I have to do. So we sold off some of them and started learning, ma managing a lot of things and then uh, of course I started a musical, I mean we had the, the jute mill, something which never happened in the 200 years of a jute industry. Some German person came to me and said, we want to have a musical program here. Again, I asked our people, they said, oh my God, you can't even think of what will happen, you know, kabhi aisa hua nahi hai, the workers, ye sab hoga. Then, I, then the next day I thought that, why am I asking them? I am supposed to be the owner. They let me tell them that yes, we'll go ahead, rather than asking them. And I did that and it was one of the most successful presentation, it went off so well. Can you imagine in such a warehouse thing, all the CC cars and all the diplomats and every, I mean, everybody was there from Calcutta. And then these things start giving you the power that, okay, I can decide, I can do things I, the way I want. So, this is actually, so, so then I, I, I also started discovering the Lata in me, because you know, all this while it was just Mrs. Arun Bajoria, there was no name. So after doing, after this consolidation, then I decided that I, I need to do something more, the social service. So I became a part of Apnea Women's Worldwide. That's a grassroots movement to end sex trafficking. So I became a trustee in that. It was started by my niece anyway. So I was the Masi to her and I became Masi to almost every prostitute in Sonagachi. And I also learned a lot from their stories that they are women like me, and uh, you know, one was Uma, just to give you one instant. She was a Hindu married to a Muslim, was a pimp after getting married. You know how they lure them and they get them married. And then once she has a child, she, he just wanted her to come in the business. She refused. She came to us. So we not only got her the custody of her child, we empowered her. And today she's running a very uh, one of our very successful uh, income generating program, which is Sentry Travel Making. She's leading that. There's another girl called Payal, who was trafficked from Bangladesh. So she took a name, I mean, Payal of course is not a real name. And then she also told me, she actually took me to her working place where she services. There's a part of Sonagachi, which is the, I don't know whether, how many of you know, it's Asia's largest red light district. There are more than 30,000 women there, trapped. And none of them are there of their own choice. Almost all have been trafficked, the age seven, eight, they have no homes, and that is their only comfort place, so they, they can't even get out. 
So then she literally took me to her working place also. And can you imagine offering me in that kind of atmosphere a Coca-Cola? And she asked a guy who was, you know, a kind of pimp, that you could Coca-Cola like I said, I feel like batching here when you are offering me Coke. But then, okay, that also went on. So we are doing serious work with them. We have put the children into Ramakrishna Mission there. They are getting educated. And then, of course, I am a nature freak. I think my blood must be green. So I believe in organic uh, farming. I do classes of that. I teach about Ayurvedic medicines there. I have a spice bagicha in Calcutta. So all of this, all of you are welcome to come whenever you want. So that's about it. My message would be that my message would be that uh, I started late, and I really had a sense of breaking away my shackles at the age of 57. You know, it was like really, uh, really as if I came out of from a cocoon, and then doing so many things, uh, not not being answerable to anyone. So it was ironical for me, but I would say nobody has to wait till these kind of circumstances. I think people can do it. Women can definitely do it uh, even before that. Why should you wait for that long? So one can do so much, so much potential is there. So I wish all of you what I have been through. and of course with four daughters a total feminist that you can understand <laughs> so that that's what miss majoria thank you so much for that very encouraging words and your very encouraging address and story thank you very much